I was extremely excited when Corsair reached out to me and said, hey, do you want to test our new cooler? And the reason I was so excited is because at that time there was a debate in my circles and where I did research as to whether you actually need a liquid cooler or if air coolers for top end CPUs were more than sufficient enough. So I wanted to put it through its paces and I wanted to see what it could do. And I mean, it's because you can only see the box here, but you'll get to see the actual unit in this video. It's massive. So I was extremely excited to see what it could do. This video was sponsored by Social Bee. Social Bee is an AI powered social media management tool that integrates all of your social media into one convenient hub. From content categorization, AI generated social media plan, single source posting, AI-assisted content generation, scheduling, and even comprehensive analytics with competitor insights, Social B will not only help you streamline and optimize your content, but save you hours which you can use to conceptualize and produce content. Use code CLOVER50X3 for 50% off your first three months. Now the cooler that I'm reviewing is the Corsair A115. Now this did come out a little while ago, and the reason that I'm only bringing this out now is because, as always, I was waiting for the perfect scenario or perfect sample data to be able to test it against. And I have not perfected my test bench, at least until, you know, more upgrades come. But I did get to test it against multiple different AIOs. And I wanted to show you how that would compete against specifically 360 AIOs because that's where I believe that this product is trying to put itself. Starting off with the length, the width and the height. The length is 155 millimeters, the width is 153 and the height is 164.8 millimeters. Now I'm not just saying this to get numbers out there. It's actually really important that you know this information before purchasing because it is large you can actually see just how large it is now you need to make sure that your case is going to be able to accommodate it as well as your motherboard because different motherboards have different io heat sinks as well as mosfet heat sinks and it is possible that it may not be able to fit depending on the type of motherboard obviously course is going to make this as accommodatable as possible to fit in as many different builds as possible but it is something that you should check heat pop configuration which we'll go into in the design but six by six millimeters and the material is scented copper another thing more covered in design is there is no lighting or rgb it does come with two fans and the fan dimensions are 140 mil fans or 140 millimeter by 25 millimeter fans next and importantly is the cooling socket support or the cpu support which type of cpu sockets it can support intel is 1700 1200 1150 1151 1155 and 1156 whereas on amd it's am5 and am4 fan speed is 400 to 1600 rpm plus minus 10 percent difference this is not something that i could check so we're going to take that at face value Fan airflow is 15.3 to 18.5 CFM or cubic feet per minute. The fan static pressure is 0.1 to 1.73 millimeters. The noise level is five to basically 34 decibels. The fan control method, it's PWM. Its weight is 2.2 kilograms and lastly the fan model which is important is the AF Elite. Now obviously if you just wanted the specs you could have gone onto the website and you wouldn't really need this video but let's move on to something a little bit more objective the design. First point of call on the design it is massive like when you open the box and see it for the first time it's almost like you're not processing what you're seeing yes there are other coolers out there that are the same size if not bigger and knock two arrangers and so on but the point that i'm trying to make is that when you look at the box and look at the picture and when you actually take it out it's almost ethereal that your eyes can't believe that you're holding something so big it is extremely large what you see on the picture doesn't do it justice size wise the next thing is the copper plates flow really well into the radiator now this is something that you could say, well, that only matters when it comes to heat and that's true. But the design is also important because when I had this mounted and I had the CPU going at full tilt, I could touch pretty much anywhere on the unit and not get physically burnt, which means that the heat dissipation from an actual design perspective is really well designed. My first impression of the radiator blades or fins were that they were a little bit thick. I don't have a micrometer to be able to actually check what the microns are 
but that really doesn't matter because that comes down to testing us to see whether the radiator over time can dissipate the heat. One thing that I really loved about the design was the mounting mechanism for the fans. It doesn't use a traditional clip. It slides on with the latch and it clicks in in its last place. And this becomes extremely convenient when you're having to mount it and dismount it the whole time where you can just literally slide it off. You can put the fans on top of the chassis and then remove the radiator pretty effectively. So when actually constructing it, I put on the radiator, the fans I hadn't even connected yet, and then you connected the fans as a after, and it was really easy to do so. The one thing that I was really worried about, but I didn't get to test, was the heat buildup of the actual radiator in a case. I use an open air test frame, so it doesn't really matter to me. But I don't think this is going to be a problem because of the size of the fans and you can orient them so that they're flowing in one direction towards the exit. So while that could be a problem, I do not think it's going to be at all. Overall on the design, I really like the unit. I found it easy to set up, easy to use, easy to mount, easy to dismount, and it looks really good. Again, the last thing is just check the size to make sure it's going to fit in your case. Now let's go into results, but before we do, I wanna give you a little story of what I did, a little bit of an idiot move, is that I was deciding on the orientation and I had the fans basically in the end looking at each other. And that means that basically one fan is blowing into the other, which means that it wasn't able to dissipate heat as well. Well, it should have not been able to dissipate heat as well, which is why I think that case heat is not gonna be that big of a problem. But the test variances were one to two degrees when the fans were mounted incorrectly versus when they were mounted correctly. However, the test data is only gonna show when the fans are mounted correctly. Okay, to start, let's give you the environment in which I tested the cooler. The CPU was the 7800X3D. The reason that I like the CPU, A, is because it's pretty much the best you get for gaming, but B, it has a, call it heating issue with the V-cache, so it's really gonna test a cooler, especially an air cooler. The motherboard was the ASRock X670E Tai Chi Carrara. The RAM was the Crucial Pro DDR5 32 gigs at 5600 megahertz. The SSD Crucial P5 plus one terabyte. The PSU, the Cooler Master, Master Watt Maker, 1200 watt. The GPU was an ASRock Radeon reference card, 7900 XT. The cooler was obviously the Corsair A115, and the case was a Cooler Master Master Frame 700 open air, as mentioned before. Now I've got three comparative results to give you. We compare both the A115 air cooler, the PC Builder Hydrochill 360 millimeter, and the Cooler Master Master Liquid PL360 Flux. Now on Cinebench 2023, which I like because it obviously pushes a CPU to its maximums, we can see what the scores were. Now the reason that we wanna show the scores, not the temperatures yet, is because the scores are derived by how well a cooler can keep the CPU cold in order to get a high score. So with the Corsair, we hit a score of 17,001. With the PC Builder, we hit a score of 17,158. And with the Master Liquid, we hit a score of 17,762. So the first two results are within realm of error. So you could say that they are pretty much the same. Obviously I do test a few times and take the average of the tests, but the only one standing out there is the 360 AIO, meaning that the A115 was able to compete with two 360 AIOs, which is impressive in and of itself. Now looking at the temperatures, when looking at the PC Builder Hydro Chill, we hit a max of 87 and an average of 76 degrees on Cinebench R23. The Cooler Master Master Liquid PL360 Flux hit a max of 77 and an average of 71. It was a little bit higher for the Corsair A115 on a max of 84 and an average of 82. As mentioned, the spike does happen because of the wicking. Moving on to ADA, in which we combine the CPU and FPU for the PC Builder Hydro Chill, we hit a max of 78 and an average of 67. For the Corsair Master Liquid PL360 Flux, a max of 61 and an average of 60. The A115 hitting a max of 71 and an average of 69. So around about a difference between seven and nine on average on all three coolers and average being the important one because that's what's really going to tell how it's gonna perform over time. 
Last but not least is 3D Mark Times by Extreme. For the PC builder, we hit a max of 81 with an average of 60, so obviously hitting a high and cooling down. For the Master Liquid PL360 Flux, a max of 73, and that's because it's got a nice dense copper plate and an average of 51, so nice and cool. With the Corsair coming in with a max of 82, so spiking a little bit high, but averaging out to 58. So all of this, again, within the realm of error or expectation, because when it comes to a air cooler, it does take time to get working. And if you want to know why this is the case, there are multiple videos on how air coolers work. If you do want me to make one, please say, because it means I get to cut open an air cooler, or at least ask to be able to cut open an air cooler. But I won't do it to this one because I'm actually using it. But onto the conclusion. Now that the stats are done, note that this was my first official review of an air cooler. Obviously I've tested air coolers before, but this was the first time I'm actually bringing it to the channel and saying, look at this air cooler and look what I think about it. And I feel that it did really well. Obviously, as time goes by, we'll have more collaborative test data to say how this air cooler performs against the others. But especially with a 7800X3D and the L3 cache is tending to get a little bit hot, it didn't suffer at all. In fact, the cooler did extremely well. I thought that it handled heat perfectly and at not one stage did I have any thermal choke. Onto the conclusion, I loved it. It's no mess, no fuss and easy to install but it does come with a price tag of 2,600 Rand or there and thereabouts, $99. Now, depending on the country you're in, you're gonna have to make your own sort of deductions, but that puts it above tier two, I call tier two coolers or 360 AIOs, and on par with some tier one entry 360 AIO liquid coolers. Now, liquid coolers generally would have pretty much the same, if not better performance. So the answer is it all boils down to personal preference. The one thing that I will say is if you compare this with a actual liquid cooler, a liquid cooler is going to hold more steady in the beginning because it's got liquid obviously washing over the copper in the beginning. So you're not gonna have as much temperature spikes. Whereas this is kind of like a engine that has to warm up in order for the wicking to work properly. Now that is the only negative that I would say for that, but if you are an air cooler enthusiast, it's definitely something I would consider. The one thing that I would say is that I have taken up my 360 AIO purely because of the convenience of this offers. And now this has become part of my permanent test rig. So when you see me doing tests, you'll always see me referencing until it changes. But the A115 from Corsair is now my test bench staple with the CPU, the 7800X3D. That is my personal opinion. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Ask your questions. I will answer them. Cheers. Goodbye.